Today we'll be tying a slight variation of the Antron egg. The only variation we're going to make is that we are going to be using egg yarn rather than using the traditional Antron yarn to tie this pattern. I've caught many fish on both variations of the pattern. However, I feel like this version of the pattern is a little bit more durable. By the nature of the fly, both patterns tend to get caught frequently in the teeth of the trout. However, the egg yarn tends to get pulled out a little bit less frequently, thus making the fly last a lot longer. A total list of materials that you will need to tie this fly can be found in the comments section of this video. Start the fly off with your thread right behind the eye of the hook. Take a few wraps back and leave your thread right at this point. We are going to do most of the tying of this fly right behind the eye of the hook, so it is important to not move too far behind the eye. Pull a piece of egg yarn off of your spool and come in with a pair of scissors and cut a piece that is about a half an inch to three quarters long. The fly that I'm going to tie here is a size 14, and for this particular size, I like to use about this much egg yarn. Take that bunch of egg yarn that you separated from the rest and keep it in a flat line, just like this. Then lay that down on top of your hook and keep about a quarter of an inch of the egg yarn sticking out past the tie-in point. Come in with your other hand and using your thumb and forefinger, pinch that yarn down. You can kind of look around to make sure that the yarn looks fairly uniform. Once you're sure that there's no gaps or anywhere that's really going to leave a bare patch, go ahead and come with your thread and wrap it around your yarn. You'll need a couple wraps at first, maybe two or three, and then look at this front end and just make sure that everything looks nice and uniform, that there's no bare patches remaining. At this point, the egg yarn can spin around the hook, and that's completely fine. We're now going to wrap back a few times and then come with a really sturdy pair of scissors and cut this yarn, and it's best if you can do so at an angle. You'll notice I leave quite a bit remaining from the cutoff point. It is shorter on top and longer at the bottom. This makes it so that when you wrap your thread back, you are constantly covering different fibers of the yarn and securing it. This will help prevent the yarn from rolling. From this point on, you do not want this yarn to roll around the hook. Go ahead and move your thread back to about halfway between where we tied it in and where we ended the yarn. At this point, we are going to add the yolk of our egg. You can really use any dubbing you want. A lot of people will use Antron at this part, and that is completely fine. I actually found this color of red wool that I really like. I believe it's a Nature Spirit dubbing, and it has this nice deep red color, and I like it a lot. Go ahead and work that yarn around and create a little ball. We want to leave some space between our tie-in point and where we're tying in our egg. That's this part right here where the thread is at. And that's because we want the yolk to end up in the middle of the egg and not towards the front. Now that all the dubbing is off, go ahead and take a wrap off the dubbing and then take a couple open spiral wraps all the way down until you're in the deep part of the bend. I like to leave my thread sitting on the front of the point of the hook. This will keep it from sliding down the bend as bad. Now this is the part that's kind of fun, but can be a little more tricky. We're going to come up here and we're going to pull all these egg yarn fibers around the sides. And really what we're trying to do is make a big collar that's nice and even. This is about what the front of the fly should look like after you've separated the fibers out. Now that you have all the yarn fibers separated out, come on the bottom and split this into a V like that. Then come with your fingers and press all these fibers back. That V is formed so that it can go on either side of the hook when we pull it back. Now pull these fibers back rather tight and right down here at the bend, tie it off with a couple wraps. At this part, if your yarn kind of slides back, like say that, that's not a big deal. We can fix that very easily on this next step. The next step is to grab this clump and bring your fingers up underneath it and move your thread at the same time and push that up until you've formed an egg shape. This is the part of the fly where you want to make any adjustments. If the yarn is twisted back, simply loosen with your bobbin, give it some slack, and as you do, just turn it around. If you pull too tightly, you'll actually slide the fibers out and that will mess up the egg and you'll have to start that step over. But once you're satisfied that you have a pretty good looking egg shape, like we do about right there, bring your thread and wrap it behind the yarn. 
taking a couple wraps to secure it, and then a couple wraps on top as well. We are going to use a similar technique using hefty scissors to cut the yarn at the back of the fly as well. At this point, there are two ways that you can finish the fly, and I will demonstrate both of them for you. The first way is to simply come in here and place a whip finish right here where you already ended the thread, leaving that little tail section out the back. You can cut your thread off and then come in with super glue and simply dab your super glue right here on the base and then let that harden. However, I have noticed that in a lot of the rivers that we fish over here in eastern Idaho, especially with the browns in the wintertime, they're really, really toothy and they'll tend to pull those fibers out. So what I like to do instead when I'm going to fish fish like that is I like to come down and wrap all these fibers down tight and sometimes it'll leave a little bit of an uglier end on the back, a little white bit, but I've never had that effect how it fishes. And then once I've covered all that up, then I'll come in here with my whip finisher and we'll finish it more down on the hook rather than up on the yarn. And I find that the fibers don't get pulled out as easy and yet it fishes just about the same. But either way, I would definitely secure this with super glue and all you have to do is come back here and put a little dab right over your thread, just like that. Let it sit for a few minutes to dry and you've got yourself a nice little egg pattern. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then go ahead and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and tight line.